Assalamualaikum, Harith Iskandar. Police record 468 suicides from January to May. That's three suicides a day. Three people are killing themselves a day. Now, I'm not an expert on mental health, but I'm pretty sure financial difficulties played a part in some, if not most of these cases. I've been on the ground with the Hope Ranch for almost two years now distributing meals, grocery packs, barangan barangan dapola. Now, as the pandemic and the lockdown went on and on and on, and you know more people began to lose their job and take pay cuts, we came across more and more cases of families having real financial problems, especially single parents, you know, with three or four or more kids, sometimes elderly people living on their own or kids who have lost a parent or both parents to COVID. Sometimes I met parents who were forced to let their kids go under someone else's care. Why? Because they couldn't afford to take care of their own children properly. And, uh, and many of them are living in small cramped apartments, in zinc roof huts, living in cars, living in the dark because they buy electricity bill. Because you know, they buy hutang. Some on the verge of being evicted and some already thrown out, tak bayar sewa. Hutang along lah, hutang kawan lah, kat member lah. The mental pressure and sadness I see in the eyes of some of these people, it's sad. It really is. And I thought to myself, this can't go on. We need to do something. So uh, the Hope Branch, uh, we're trying to help. We started the Hope Branch Rule, R-U-L-E, Abilities Living Expenses. If you or someone you know need help with rule, please contact 0138117165. We will do whatever we can to help you through this tough period in your life. Of course, bukan selama lamanya, okay? But just temporary, hopefully to prevent you, you know, from sinking deeper and deeper into darkness. Of course, kita, kita bukan, you know, kita bukan main bagi aja. We've got a, a committee that will vet through your request. We'll do our due diligence, which means as far as possible, any financial aid will go direct to the one yang dihutang. Misalnya kalau sewa, we'll deal directly with your landlord. Electricity, you know, we'll same up the bill and pay directly to TNB, stuff like that. So like I said, it will not be permanent, just a helping hand to support you through this trying time until you will able to carry again. And by the way, if you want to support us, support them, boleh juga. You can contribute to the May Bank account listed here or click on the link in the post. This is just about throwing out a life jacket to those who really need help. And if you need help uh, and, um, you know, you really, really, really are in some kind of trouble, please contact the number given. I'm Harith Iskanda. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is exactly 10 o'clock. Uh, 9 o'clock. 9. Up 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock. I'm starting on time. Oh, best near. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of What's Going On Malaysia. How is everybody doing? Uh, what's the date today? 11 October. The borders are open. The borders are open to everybody's leaving town. Che, tiba-tiba je lagu. Tiba-tiba je. Guys, thank you very much uh, for watching this streaming. To those of you who are watching live, I just want to acknowledge you. Uh, you, Yung Jun Yun, uh, 
Uh, Lee Allen, Zen Solo, Lim Zenep. I'm watching you, Shazli Ali. Thank you so much for commenting already. To those of you who are watching after the fact, Munkin, you are catching this episode the next day or the day after that or during the week, you are watching this. Thank you for choosing to watch this episode. I don't know what brought you here, but thank you. Uh, to those of you who are listening, we are also on podcast. Some of you may be listening to this on Spotify. Trima kase, trima kase for listening uh, as you're working out uh, or you're jogging or whatever you're doing. Because tonight is going to be yet again another explosive episode of What's Going On Malaysia. Now, uh, I do the show What's Going On Malaysia because basically I have a simple question. What's going on, Malaysia? And every guest that I bring uh, offers a few answers that gets me, myself, a little bit closer to answering that question. And I hope you are enjoying this journey with me. Uh, together, we are on a journey to find out where our country is heading, uh, how it's doing, where we are on track and where we are off track. And I guarantee you that tonight's guest uh, on this episode... Uh, well, it is tonight, if you're watching tonight, if you're listening to the daytime, it's the day. Today's guest uh, is going to be offering a point of view unique to himself. He has a very distinct uh, point of view, a very distinct voice. And he comes from a very, how would I say, uh, I don't want to use the word learned because um, that, that would be too simple to say. But he comes from a very, uh, someone with the experience of the topic because he has been at the top of this particular game in that position. He has been at the top. And we are talking about education this evening. So before we get into that, please do me a favor, Tuan Tuan Dan Puan Puan, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, please take the next five to eight seconds to share this streaming. Uh, if you're watching on my Harith Iskandar Comedian Facebook page, just share it onto your Facebook. If you're watching from Dr. Masli's page, please share it. If you're watching on Harith Iskandar Comedy YouTube, Click and subscribe and share it onto, a, onto your WhatsApp groups because we are going to be jumping into uh, begitu, uh, I wouldn't say controversial, I would just say a little bit panas, you know, beep, just a little bit of a tss, ah, macam ada, ada bunyi, bunyi, tss, ah, bunyi sikit dia tu. Okay, guys, so let's jump straight into it. Uh, just want to acknowledge Tahnia Bo from Akram Ishak. Thank you for watching. Um, Tetamu hari ini ada kelas dan bagus untuk cakap tentang pendidikan. There you go. Dr. Mazli is already waiting in the back. I can see him smiling. Valerie says, Harith Iskandar, watching from PJ, keen on today's guest speaker, who was our MOE at a one time. He was MOE. Uh, 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 MOE. I love these acronyms, man. I love it. I just MOE. He was MOE. MOE. Do. D-O-E. Do. Good evening, a good day from Kuching, Sarawak. We've got people watching from all over the place. I know we've got people watching from Singapore, from Sarawak. Gwen, you know what? Stop talking, Harith. Stop talking. You've talked for three minutes already. Bring on the guest. Bring on the person we are all here to listen to. And I'm going to do that right this minute. Tuan, tuan, dan, puan, puan, wherever you are. If you're watching on a device, if you're watching on a laptop, if you're watching on a phone, put your phone down for a moment. Wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. And please welcome into the studio my distinguished guest, Dr. Mazli Mali. Apa kabar, tuan? Bye, bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Harris. Yeah. How are you Thank doing? Thank you so much. I'm good. I'm good. I'm especially good. Uh, yes, because, obviously. Uh, uh, yeah. No, tonight I'm especially good because uh, we have we have spoken before on a, a, a show uh, at the Joke Factory, and I really yeah, enjoyed yeah. Uh, that chat with you. When was that? I did when enjoy that a lot. <laughs> you didn't? No, I did enjoy that a lot. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Extremely oh, <sorry>. enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doc, how, how have you Sorry, been be, otherwise? Be, before you start, it's, yeah. uh, it seems that everybody is praising your shirt. Oh, Sukamaran yep. says, cool t-shirt. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Okay, here's a little bit of a secret. This is the kind of shirt, when I see it on hanging up, but my wife says, hey, you will look good in this. And I'm like, are you sure? But you know what, Doc, when we are married, Sometimes we just go along with the wife, what the wife says, right? Because yeah, they have, yeah, yeah. they have a vision. Yang kita tak nampak. Oh, you know? that's dangerous. 
I know. So my <laughs> wife chose this shirt for me and I wore mm -hmm. it. And now people are saying it looks good. So she was correct. She good, was is correct. An good is an understatement. It looks <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> Uh, this, this is my this is my favorite shirt right there. It's, uh, uh, Liverpool. I, you are not Liverpool, okay. right? You're Arsenal, uh, Arsenal again? No, Man City. Man City. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> as, long as, not, as long as not Manchester United again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First of all, thank you for being on the show. Uh, secondly, how have you been? Uh, We'll get into the topics in a while, but how have you been personally and how is your family? First and foremost, I would like to thank you, me and myself, for having me in this show. And yeah, it has been great. It has been uh, wonderful these days, especially with that good news we heard yesterday. Marantas Negri. Yes. <laughs> it, um, and your personal feelings about that? Because you are on the inside, you know... You, you're hearing all the discussions between the MKN and the MOH and the so your personal not really. feeling about this? No? No, not really. We we never been tipped off earlier. I mean we yeah. just got to know it yesterday when they announced it. We heard yeah. the rumors. I'm no longer the government, bro. <laughs> but 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 you're there, you're in parliament. Uh, in parliament, you know, they, they they never discussed that uh, big decision with us. I mean they just made the announcement. <laughs> Don't don't tell me at the toilet when I think I can change the blah. Hey, bah, ada ada apa apa cerita berita? Huh? Ada tips tak? Ada tips? Ada tips? Tak ada tak ada. They will say hush hush. Uh, hush hush. Okay. Before we get into the serious topic, you was it was it today or yesterday? You brought up wrestling. You brought up pro wrestling. Today. It, was today. it was today. It was today. Um, um, uh, Isaac, can you bring up that article, please? So you brought up uh, the idea of pro wrestling. Masli suggests Malaysian WrestleMania. And we've got photos of Phoenix as well as Aya Shukri. So as education minister, a former education minister, you, you brought up the idea of the Minister of Communications should be promoting uh, or, or at least uh, doing something to help Malaysian professional wrestling, and you were encouraging that RTM plays, um, you know, has it uh, screened on on RTM as well. And you have true belief that uh, this is an industry that needs help from the communications and multimedia industry. And you brought up the example that in the USA there is government support be behind WWE. So uh, let me let me ask you about that. Kenapa tiba tiba you you. By the way, uh, shout out to Nordiana, who I've had on my show and I've interviewed as well as uh, Ayaz Shaukat. Uh, yeah, dog, kenapa tiba-tiba cakap pasal wrestling? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I mean, amongst the professional wrestling uh, fans in Malaysia, it's, it's, it's no big deal. I mean, I've been with them. Uh, I've, I've been appearing in, in some of their talk shows and... When I was a minister, I did attend one of those uh, matches that they organized. Yeah. Okay. So for them, the 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 fans and the, the wrestlers alike, uh, it, it's uh, it's no big deal. I mean, I've been with them <laughs> for a while. Yeah. Are Are you a fan of professional oh, wrestling? Oh, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of professional wrestling since since I was six, seven. The oh. late 70s, yeah. Are, are we talking about uh, Andre the Giant time? or oh, Hulk Long Hogan before time? that. On the mat, if you still remember. On the, on mat, the mat. That was an Australia. That was a New Zealand uh, wrestling, a professional wrestling program, if I'm not mistaken. Mark Lewin and uh, Ox Baker, those those names. Preceded oh, no. uh, Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, Paul Andov and, you know, I, I I have no idea what you're talking about. Those names <laughs> are foreign to me. But wow, that you are a you're true not alone. blue. You you are true blue blue wrestling fan. Okay, Grace I Jackson do, do. here. Grace Jacqueline, uh, I have to bring. She says I hate wrestling. Can you please convert uh, Grace Jackson? And and, and <laughs> I'm sure she has a reason. Why do you love wrestling, Doc? 
Um, no, it's it's an entertainment. I mean, some people they, they they like watching movies. Some people like watching, you know, boxing match, for example. And some people just love to watch concerts. As for me, I love watching them. You know, doing all those scripted actions. And you know, you know, a lot of people saying that oh, wrestling is fake. Unlike boxing, MMA, and other sports. Uh, what do you say? What do you think? You know, you, you look at movies. Most of movies. They are scripted, just like wrestling. You know, when you look at Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, you know that he's not that <laughs> that guy, but he's acting. The same goes with the the wrestlers. They have their own kayfabe. They have their own uh, 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 what they call it uh, uh, persona. So they appear on the ring as that persona, as that kayfabe. But in the real life, I mean, they just. Normal people, they, 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 were, they are stuntmen, they are actors, you know, those kind of things, yeah. <laughs> so you were, you're very passionate about it, obviously, and you brought it up in Parliament. Oh, How was the response? Did anybody <laughs> shout you down? <laughs> no, not really, not really. I trust that we have at least dozens of uh, professional wrestling fans in the Day One Riot as well. <laughs> and, and, and for your surprise, Harry, is when I brought that up, there were few, uh, okay, not few, lah, uh, some of these uh, uh, mentries and Timalan mentries, they were looking at each other and they were talking about it. And yeah, but you're right. I mean, not, not everybody like watching professional wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, because sometimes when you watch what happens in the parliament, it almost seems like some kind of professional wrestling is going on. It's just like the wrong world. <laughs> yeah, at least verbally. Lah. You know, when the two okay, wrestlers okay. come in the ring and they start shouting at each other, I'm a chantu lah, parliament sometimes. True, <laughs> true. <laughs> okay. Uh, great to hear that you are normal. I saw a comment just now, someone was saying, Wow, Dr. Masley, you seem so, you seem so normal. Uh, let oh. me assure you, everyone who's watching, Dr. Masley is your average normal human being. He's not a superhero or a wrestling in a kit. Normal, kita normal. Eh? There, Christina Chan says, "You sound so normal." I don't know why she's surprised. Do you get this often? Do people say, "Hey, you need normal, lah"? Uh, <laughs> that sounds cringe. I know, cringe. Right? <laughs> as if, okay. No, no, as if politicians are abnormal human beings or abnormal creatures. <laughs> but I don't blame them. I don't well, blame people who, who having that thought in their mind <laughs> yeah sometimes you know when we watch what's going on in the youtube videos on you know what's happening in parliament get upon betul ke ni i won't blame you for that i won't blame you for that <laughs> <laughs> okay doc uh, i asked uh, for those of you who are uh, watching i asked uh, all my guests the same question before i begin the show just as a sign of respect because i'm not an investigative journalist i, I say mm -hmm. uh, you know doc is there anything that you uh, would uh, rather I don't bring up or don't ask. And Doc, Doc Masley, much like many of the other guests, was like, you know what, green light, it's your show, go for it. So much respect to that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, first off, uh, I, I would like to bring this up because uh, it was brought to my attention. By the way, thank you very much for your book, Dr. Masley. Oh, uh, you're just, welcome. Kind of there. Uh, Memory Bukan Memoir, to those of you. Uh, I have not had time to read the whole book yet. I just received it yesterday. But uh, so uh, at the speed I read, I have just read the opening page where you said, where you wrote a note for me. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I would like to ask you uh, in your book um, mm -hmm. about the, uh, during your time as the education minister, uh, you decided not to extend uh, the, the YTL contract, which was, uh, th this is in your book, so I'm going to ask you openly, uh, which is, uh, and you claim that this YTL contract issue, I believe, is because of the was it because of the internet, um, um, the money spent on supposedly bringing uh, the internet or bringing uh, connectivity to all the schools in the country. Am I correct so far? Is that what yes, you're talking yes, about? Yes. The contract? Uh, and you state in your book that this is one of the re one of the reasons why Atun Mahate, the PM at that time, asked you to resign. Now, could you spend a minute educating myself? as well as the general public who may not know about this particular topic, what was the particular issue, and then we can carry on from there. 
Okay, uh, thank you, Harris, for bringing <laughs> this topic at the beginning of, <laughs> of the show. I know. Jump in <laughs> at the deep end. Ini panas. Start, start terus meletup. Okay, anyway, Ari, uh, I think I, w- I, w- I would uh, advise uh, our viewers and listeners to grab a copy of this book and have a read of that topic per se. Muka surat 369 page 369 and uh huh and uh, yeah come, come again keep on talking keep on talking okay yeah. so I mean uh, yes as I as I mentioned in that book uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, Tone Doctor Mahde uh, before. Yeah, I received the email from him asking me to render back the position to him because he was the one who pointed me at the position, and uh, I what have that. The, what been, is the problem? Okay, the problem with that program, the one with StarryNet and and few other contracts with that specific company that was initiated since the days of uh, our former prime minister and who happened to be the president of my former party uh, it it performed badly and uh, when their contract ended they wanted to continue or to renew their contract and based on the professional evaluation by uh, professional bodies by research teams and by the leadership of minister of education with the advice of the penasihat undang-undang of our uh, ministry, we decided not to renew the contract. And we also uh, receive a lot of advice from, you know, Jabatan uh, uh, Accountant, uh, no, not Accountant, uh, 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 what, what, what they call it, uh, 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 Nah, it, it didn't come to my mind. <laughs> Maksudnya, okay. the, the report, or the, the auditor's general report, the auditor's okay. general report uh, was talking about that and a lot of other reports. The PAC in the parliament has been discussing about these topics and they are still discussing about this issue and a lot of uh, complaints from the teachers, from the parents, uh, from the students, from schools. So at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, we decided not to continue with the uh, contract. And as a result, that made, what, according to the then Prime Minister, my former boss, according to him, he said that that made my uh, party president very upset. And I was called five times to the Prime Minister's office just to discuss about this issue. Uh, there were two times where I brought with me the leadership of Minister of Education to explain to the Prime Minister in length and professionally about what really happened and what uh, led us to that decision. And the final meeting I had with him as the Minister of Education, he told me that your, your party president is very angry with you. And after a couple of days when I was in holiday, I received <laughs> an email from him, a letter asking me to, you know, the rest is history. Okay. Uh, could you understand that statement? What did you make from the statement, the party president is very upset with you? What did you take from that? What did, what did it mean? That uh, my days in the ministry accounted. So I know that's the price I have to pay, just like I mentioned in the book, that when I jumped into politics, when I, you know, took my oath in front before the Yandi Putuan Agung, it's people's first, it's country first, yourself, second, third, or the last. I mean, you must put the priority for the nation and for the people. So I took about a professional decision with regard the contract and I know that I have to pay a price because in politics you know sometimes you need to make 
very hard decision on the expense of maybe your own interests. Yeah, nothing to, nothing to regret. <laughs> That's your national service. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, yes. Um, I don't want to say congratulations, but <laughs> wow, that, that sounds um, very, very uh, honest and authentic. But along the way, you said you had five meetings. In between those five meetings, were there not people who were whis whispering into your ear like, wow, uh, you know, Doc, um, maybe you need to pull back or, you know, this might be dangerous for you or it might not work out the way you need want it to work out? Were there people already, inverted commas, warning you or advising you to to hold the reins, to pull back? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, that, I mean, I mean, but regardless of whatever, the whispers and the, you know, when you're doing the right thing, go for it. I mean, uh, sometimes, yes, in life, you need to make a very difficult and hard decision uh, for the country and for the people. But again, that's your national service. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put a hypothetical to you. Okay, mm -hmm. because I understand this is this is probably not the first time this kind of thing has happened within political parties. But uh, did you at any point consider or say to yourself, you know what, for the greater good, uh, maybe I need to let this go because I can achieve greater good by remaining in this position. You know, do you see where I'm getting here? Like weighing up. Um, maybe I let this go so that later on I can do better, something better. Did that kind of option or thought ever cross your mind? Uh, unfortunately, no. The, what I fear most is if you start beginning to compromise or to trade off any of your principles, there will be a slippery slope. There will be a slippery slope. Yeah. If you begin to compromise any of your principles, that will be a slippery slope. I'm going to put that on a T-shirt, Doc. And the pun, <laughs> slippery slope at the back, and I'm going to put your name there. <laughs> credit, credit to you. So, okay. Uh, so, uh, you, what you are saying, if I hear you correctly, that was a decision that you were relieved of your position. Would that be correct to say? That was the reason. I come again. So would that be, that incident would be the reason that you were relieved of your position as a minister? I suppose, yeah, yeah, because that was things that been mentioned in the letter I received from the then prime minister. So, you know, that's part of life yeah. and hidup umpama roda. <laughs> what do you mean by hidup umpama roda? Elaborate. You know, you, you, you wouldn't be static in, in, in any positions you are. I mean, I was... <laughs> I was an activist and a normal lecturer and then, you know, jump into politics, this totally wild new world. And then after a few months, I, I, I involved in uh, the election, got elected as MP of Semparangam. And after a few days, appointed as Minister of Education, never in my dream to have that, although that was always my dream. But that fast, no, it never came into my mind. And you have that opportunity, so you wanted to realize your dream, wanted to bring Malaysia that far, that high, uh, looking at the potential that we have. We have a lot of potentials, and, but we just need few brave decisions to be made and uh, a lot of adjustments, a lot of reforms. And you can read that in, in my book, all those reforms that I tried. And we have started, we have embarked. Um, but, uh, and you know, what ha happened, what happened? <laughs> so, but anyway, okay. you just don't know what will happen to you tomorrow. But the most important thing, do your best. Do your best in whatever you're doing. I mean, I keep reminding myself and, and everybody else, including my, 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 my children, that we must start our day with the spirit of dragon and horse. I'm not sure whether you heard of this Chinese cliche, uh, not, not, not cliche, Chinese proverb or uh, you must live with the spirit of uh, Long Ma Junction, you know, the spirit of dragon and horse. So make sure whatever you do, you do them perfectly. Whatever you, you, you're working on, 
to the bass. So sorry, I sounds just like no. a typical motivator. <laughs> but no, no, Doc. Yes, you do sound like a typical motivator, but you also sound very idealistic. Now, let me play devil's advocate here. Being this idealist, being this uh, motivational, uh, uh, spiritual person, being this dragon horse, let's wake up and do our very best. Am I incorrect in saying that somehow that um, type of person would not fit into Malaysian politics so smoothly and you will come up against a lot of opposition with those kind of ideals? Uh, it's not easy, is it, to having that kind of ideal? Harris, the world that we're living in now was built upon ideals, was built upon dreams. And those dreams and ideals, when it was first touted, or first said and uttered, people would say that whoever said that, they were either crazy or they were out of this world. You know, but look, look at us. You know, look at, you know, these normally typical Americans would say that, oh, look at our brave and freedom uh, land. It was built upon dreams. Yes, you know, today, today's dreams, it's a reality of tomorrow, but you need to strive for it. You need to sacrifice, sometimes on expense of your own interest. And on your, on your life, but But what I would like to say, sometimes you want a better future for Malaysia, you need to sacrifice. You want a better, ideal Malaysia. I mean, you need, you need to do your best. You need to do your best. And sometimes you need just put away your own personal interest. Put people's interests first. Put national national's interests first. I mean, that's how we we can achieve our dream. Otherwise, if we do business as usual, if we just you know uh, walk the pace or berjalan apa ikut arus, we won't go anywhere. And this is the situation of Malaysia now because we don't believe in ideals because we never want to push I, ourselves beyond the comfort zone. You know. This is where, you know, just like even the, the wrestling topic yeah, that you brought just now, I could see the potential of, of our talents there. Uh, Diana, uh, Shaukat, and others. We have, I mean, that big Gotham, uh, Azwan Srikala, the Alpha Male, what they call them, and a lot of others. I mean, these people, they deserve to be in WWE. They deserve to be known. You know, people were, were happy looking at, Ro, Ro, what is his name, Ro, Ronnie in, in, in Sanchi. Because he's Malaysian, we were proud of uh, uh, Tansri. What's her name? Uh, Michelle Yeoh. Uh, Michelle Yeoh, because she appears on Hollywood. What would be our feeling when we see our own talents, our own superstars in WWE? You know, and they they can do that. And and our neighbors, Singapore. At the moment, they have their own professional wrestler in WWE, and even a very traditional, uh, conservative country like Saudi Arabia are having their wrestlers in WWE. Why not Malaysia? I think we just need to to push ourselves beyond the comfort zone, and that's only res professional wrestling. What more about everything else? What more about education? If you read in my book, uh, Harris, I did mention a lot about. <laughs> How, where the, 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 our ability to put Malaysia along with Finland when it comes to schooling and teaching, along with Germany when it comes to Tibet, or at par with Japan uh, in, in terms of discipline, at par with Singapore in terms of uh, STEM or science and mathematics. But we need to do a radical change. And I've started it, and it's all here. It's all here. <laughs> but, unfortunately, but unfortunately, you know what happened? Time was not given to us. Yeah. But <laughs> so, sorry, yeah, a bit see, emotional. That part, I love it. I love the emotion. Yeah. I love the authenticity. Uh, it's totally are, different from our, from our performance the other day at the Joke Factory. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We were singing together, a little song. <laughs> Today's song, like, <laughs> kind of no. intense. 
today, no, today you sound like a John Lennon lyric. Like, you know, <laughs> people may believe you're a dreamer, but you're not the only one. The only one. <laughs> right. Some may say you're a dreamer. Okay. Yeah. And for, for viewers' information, no. the very first uh, chapter, I, I quoted John Lennon. Did you? Yes, you did. Yeah, too. you can read there. John Lennon okay. berkata. <laughs> John Lennon berkata kepada mereka yang mungkin muda yang uh, sekarang tengah Google who is John Lennon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That means you are probably under the age of thirty-eight or thirty-five. John, Google it. Google who is John yeah, Lennon, yeah, yeah. who is Paul McCartney. You McCann, may say Ringo I'm Star. a dreamer, but I'm not <laughs> the only one. <laughs> okay, we could do this all night. Is... I've got my guitar there. We'll bring we'll bring that out later. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> Just kidding. Me. Okay. Let, let's talk about ideals. So yeah. before we go to the future, um, I, I just want to I just want to repeat this for those who did not or were not privy to the first show. Um, during your tenure, we're just going to spend a little bit of time in history. During your tenure as an education of minister, uh, you were caught or trapped into a couple of cliches, i.e. the black shoe issue, uh, etc., which to this day, people go, oh, the black shoe minister. Now, we spoke about this the last time you were on the show, but uh, looking back on those uh, that history, looking back on that experience, what did you learn from it? Uh, how you can get, not to say, you're not misquoted, but you get taken out of context. What what did you learn and what could you have done differently looking back in retrospect in terms, oh, in terms of your experience? The biggest lesson I learned from that is I need a good professional communication team to advise me on communication. If, yes. if you watch if you watch the the Netflix, Netflix series uh, Designated Survivor, did, did you okay. watch it? Not yet, but I know of it. <laughs> okay, it was wonderful. When I watch it, that designated president of the United States of America, you know, how he has gone through firefighting almost every day, if not every hour, but he was very fortunate because he has a good media advisor and good communication team. Uh, then I was very ideal. You know, ideal is good, but when you deal with reality, you need to equip yourself with, 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 with an adequate uh, weapons and defense mechanism. So, you know, I was an activist. I was, uh, I was an academic. Then we were never expected that this thing would happen. You talk about a thousand things, and the one that will be picked up is a very, you know, <laughs> uncomprehendable thing. Shoes. You know, but again, this book explained those thousand things that I've done. <laughs> and and I hope I hope that one day, despite now people may be talking about black shoes, but one day people is people will started saying that oh the ministers of memories. <laughs> ah so I am going to offer uh, a book to the people watching at the end of the show who can point out the exact number of times that Dr. Masli has mentioned his book from the beginning until the end of the show. <laughs> you will be getting a copy of Memory Bukan Memoir. That is now it's not memoir. every day you got into Harris show. So make full use of it by promoting whatever I have. <laughs> Please do. So if you were to become mm -hmm. education minister, and we are talking about the cycle of life, uh, Okay, let, let's not talk about, there are a hundred, probably a thousand things that you need to improve. What would be the first issue that you would tackle? Like, beso, tiba tiba, for some unforeseeable reason, you are appointed education minister. You've been in the position before. What is the first thing you would tackle? Communication. Because the moment I have a good, an excellent communication thing, uh, sorry, a, a, an excellent communication team, I can... Sorry again to promote this book. I, I can laksanakan whatever we have planned, whatever we have started. It's enough there. That's one thing. Another thing, we need an ample time. Actually, Harris, 20 months, 
was not enough. And I just don't know how in the world in Malaysia, if you 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 could separate education from politics i just wish that one day we would be as professional as some other countries they they, they managed to put education uh, not put they just managed to, to 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 put a distance between education and politics and our neighbor for example indonesia you look their their current minister of education is uh, mr nadim makarim who is the founder of gojek you know, um, and before him, it was uh, Professor Muhaji, uh, a former uh, lecturer, university lecturer, just like myself then. But in Malaysia, unfortunately, all this while, you know, the ministers of education, they were politicians, just like myself, despite I was only two months politician and then became the minister of education. But uh, that was a reality, apart from Tansri Musa Muhammad, lah. Tansri Musa Muhammad uh, in early 2000. He was appointed as a uh, minister of education, and he has no political background. Is and he was a former lecturer of USM. Yeah, sorry, to, did I answer no. your question? Yes, you absolutely answered my question. And speaking no, of implementing things that you had uh, started before, last week you revealed on Twitter that 104 school construction projects for uh, the year were yet to start, and you mentioned. Uh, and the portal which shows the progress of the Skola uh, Daif that were they were no longer there. So apparently uh, you had started or there was some scheme to um, support or, or work on 104 Skola Daif and there was supposed to be a portal, but apparently now it's no longer there. Could you just take a minute to give us a little bit of background okay, on what okay. that was all about? Okay, this is very interesting. You know, amongst things that I, I, uh, I put as my priorities when I, when I came into the ministries, it was Pambai Pulihan Skora Daif, you know, repairing the dilapidated schools, mostly in Sabah and Sarawak. You know, looking at the schools, I, I, I've been there a couple of times and seeing them with my bare eyes, I just couldn't imagine that we are in the 21st century. To be honest, Aris, tak terbayang, sekolah, sekolah papa, you, 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 can, you can Google my picture visiting Skola Daif, ni. Dah sengit sekolahnya, bocoh-bocoh, -boco. and, and and some of the schools, I can get my head through the ni, the walls, but bukannya invisible, tak? I mean, dah bocoh sekolah tu, okay? That was the reality. So then I put my on my on my agenda number one, I want to lift the burden of the teachers so they could they could concentrate in educating uh, and 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 and. Uh, in, in instigating the best potential of their students and number two repairing dilapidated schools and they there were the thousand uh, seventeen hundred schools so, i mean uh, lebih kurang lah. so okay. i put that as, as my priority so what i've done kita letakkan certain goal and then we put a time frame there we have 2018 we have 2019 so realistically for 2018 we have 300 something schools and for 2019 we have nearly 800 schools we put time frame and we want people to know it that kita sedang lakukan ini so how i did that number one i really pushed the bahagian pembangunan in in the minister of education to give me a weekly report on the progress of that project so, setiap minggu mereka melaporkan kepada saya <laughs> dalam dia, dia panggil post cabinet meetings in the ministry, number one. And number two, I want that, pre, that, that report to be printed to me, number two. Number three, I asked them to come up with a dashboard. And, and they did that. Dashboard okay. with the pictures, the progress, and I'm monitoring them weekly, if not daily. Sometimes daily lah kalau rajin. Tapi dia tak update. Kadang-kadang dia update apa ni lepas dua minggu baru dah update benda tu kan but i'm monitoring them this is where if you try to google uh, if you try to search in the youtube about sekolah daif mazli you would find some of my uh, footages or pictures apa ni flashing uh, apa ni placards with the pictures of schools that we have repaired sebelum dan selepas before and after just to to tell the MPs that whatever you ask, okay, this is the result. This is the answer. 
I've done that in 2018. I've done that in 2018, uh, in 2019. And I keep mentioning to them, and dear MPs, dear people, please have a look and please monitor our dashboard. It's very unfortunate. After the change of government, uh, the current minister and minister of education did not put a lot of emphasis in reporting of the progress of uh, not only in, in repairing dilapidated schools, but also in other things. And number two, they were not really transparent enough. Transparent is the key word. How to, how to report to the people and how to convince the people that you, you are doing your job, that you are delivering something that, you know, and people deserve to monitor us. And if there are a lot, if there are any weaknesses, they are there to correct you. But you need to show them your progress. You need to show them examples. Uh, this is where I found very irritating. Kemudian yang ketiganya, you, you, you need to report to your uh, colleague MPs, especially the oppositions. That what we did then. So what happened during that sitting, yang the one you mentioned reported in the media, uh, my former deputy minister of education was asking uh, our current minister of education to come out with a list of schools that is going to be repaired with the a huge amount of money allocated within RMK uh, 12, RMK 12. It was reported uh, a few billions just only to repair 148 schools. Jadi kita pelik lah, because this is nearly three times the amount that we spent then for, for, for the same uh, quantity of schools. Jadi my, my, my deputy minister, former deputy minister cakap, minta lah list. Sebutkan sekolah mana dan berapa belanjanya sebab belanjanya 2.7 kali ganda daripada belanja zaman kita dulu. You know what the minister replied? Dia kata, oh zaman apa zaman apa ni awak pun tak tak ada keluarkan list. Zaman apa ni menteri pun ada kat depan saya ni uh, tak ada keluarkan list. That was a blat blatant lies. I did not only we came up with list and details for the MPs, we also came up with a, with a dashboard. Yeah. Not only that, we keep publishing and telling the public, telling the MPs of what we are doing, what we have done. Itu yang I got very angry. I tried to dig up furthermore. I showed them that their dashboard is not functioning. And apparently, malam tu terus functioning. Bila their function, they lagi spill more beans. Sebab apa? It was stated there 104 schools projects for the year 2021 status tak mula pun lagi kosong zero mula. So he, he I mean he dug his own grave. Dia apa? Membuka dia punya kemaluan dia apa? Sorry, membuka dia punya <laughs> sendiri. Sorry sir, sorry for my words. I was trying to choose a better word for that. But anyway. So when, 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 when I pointed out, when I was inside the, the, the day one, the, the, the dashboard did not functioning. So I told him, why is not functioning? Jadi mungkin dia kelangkabut, he asked the, apa, the officers to activate the dashboard lah. Bila that night the, the dashboard was activated, the same dashboard that I, I keep up in it that I started then, itu kita nampak. A project for 2021, 104. Uh, bermula, zero. So the next day, okay. I just show it to the public. Lah. Okay, yeah, sorry yes. for that. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's valuable information. But okay, what would you say to uh, the argument that, yelah, tapi sekarang 2021, uh, it's COVID, it's pandemic, uh, everyone is supposedly learning from home, although I don't see how. Uh, people in the pendalaman could be studying from home anywhere but you know there, there is an argument there that perhaps the focus should be more on e-learning and, and improving that rather than fixing dilapidated schools. What would you say Definitely, to that argument? Totally two different things. For the teaching part, it's, it's, it's the teachers and the schools. For repairing dilapidated schools, 
it's, it's not the job of the teachers and the schools. It's the job of the apa tu, contractors that been assigned that project. Then you just imagine, dalam keadaan budak tak pergi sekolah, waktu ni lah nak betulkan sekolah. And it has been more than, I mean, it has been 10 months. 10 bulan. What were they doing then? You just couldn't imagine. Kalau dia mulakan, projek telah mulakan, in progress, we can accept that. But tak dimulakan lagi. I'm, I'm not sure what is the status today. Maybe dah mula. Tapi that was what reported by the apa, on the dashboard. Itu yang I share it. Okay, okay thank you. The dashboard is functioning now, but unfortunately, <laughs> you can see the result. Yeah. Uh, okay. So many, uh, so many issues to deal with. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, Lagi banyak seem- worm in the can that will come out. I know. <laughs> uh, but you, you still seem very passionate about making a difference, specifically in the education sector. Uh, you still seem very passionate on the topic on the subject do you would it be a dream it wasn't a dream or you wasn't expecting to happen to become minister of education but is it on your is it on your radar again like you know what let me let me do this again this is my goal harris i still remember the day when uh, i announced to the public uh, that i'm rendering back my position to the prime minister towards the end Uh, you know, biasalah bila buat uh, press statement, you have a lot of questions from from the press. Uh, they ask a lot of things and I did answer them with one specific uh, answer that until today, I keep reminding uh, myself with it. I said, in whatever position I'm in or I'm at, I will keep striving for the country, for the best of the nation. Jadi di mana pun saya berada, whether I'm a minister, I'm not a minister, I'm an MP, I'm not an MP, I'm a politician, I'm not a politician. I keep striving for the best of the na- for the nation. I will do my best to help the education, to uplift the education, the quality of education in Malaysia. And I mean, that's my life. That's my life. Okay. And even, well, even one day, who knows that I might turn into, I might uh, uh, choosing different uh, profession but i will keep uh, that as part of my passion and i will fully strive for it yeah because for me i believe that education is for all and it's everybody's responsibility pendidikan untuk semua dan tanggungjawab kita bersama pendidikan untuk semua dan tanggungjawab kita bersama i totally agree with you on that one um from my point of view memang saya as a student <laughs> i was never a good student uh, i was <laughs> yeah i did not get the results that my parents wanted me to get but i, I that, remember that doesn't mean you are not a good student there is this, this is the thing that we need to change the, the 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 mentality and mindset of our society you are good if you if you score good grades if you're not performing well in exam then you are not good i mean it's totally wrong i mean you're talking about good it based on the potential of the students you're doing per, i mean you're doing excellent man what are you doing and i trust just like any others you cannot say to gordon ramsay for example man, it's 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 a great master chef but i'm not sure whether he performed that well when he was at school in his exams you know you look at cristian cristiano uh, cristiano ronaldo uh, from our mutual uh, not uh, apa ni club a football club man <laughs> he belongs to that mm, not favorite team. yeah yeah the other team the other team you know i don't think people, people talk about his grades in exam But look where he is now. Jadi, for me, education should go beyond grades. Education should go beyond examination. Examination should go beyond competing each other's based on numbers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you as well. Uh, and I say this to a lot of students, uh, specifically those who are you know, heading into SPM or whatever. 
and and I tell them, look, uh, I did not excel in my SPM. In fact, I came nowhere near to excelling. But myself and the 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 guys that I knew who were in my level in school are all happy and successful in their yeah. current lives, in whatever they're doing. It's not all about. So I say to people who you know don't. Even if you don't do well, inverted commas, in your SPM, it's not the end of the world by a long shot. Sure. Uh, no matter what your parents or your teacher tells you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to throw this, this topic out. This may take another hour. We don't have that time. But uh, <laughs> the, the vernacular schools, the languages, the, the, the Chinese schools and the Tamil schools. And what, what is, what's your take on that? I know we don't have all night to talk about this. Mm -hmm. But could you spend a couple of minutes... Uh, because I just want to know your point of view. Yeah, yeah. Uh, should we have it? Shouldn't we have it? What is your What yeah. was your point of view on it? You're talking about vernacular school. You cannot separate that discussion from international schools, for example, other private schools, Scholar Hagama and Tafis and what more. You know, we discuss about this uh, in the morning in the parliament today. Today, uh, the, there was a question uh, imposed to the. Uh, Deputy Minister of Education, and he, he answered that uh, in a standard format. But anyway, if you ask me, for me, it's the vernacular school. You're talking about Skola Gamma, vernacular schools, it has, they have been there for, for more than a century. And uh, yes, it requires the courage to come up with, with a national school which standardizes. Uh, one school for the nation. <clears throat> but the reality is now it's not only the vernacular school that we're having, and it's not only the scholar government that we're having, we also have a mushrooming of uh, international schools and private schools. Cumanya, the only thing, how do we make sure that those schools really inculcating good values, one thing, and number two, the sense of national identity, that's another thing. And the most important thing is Bahasa Melayu, Bahasa Kebangsaan. Uh, this is the way forward. And if you read in my book, I did mention a few chapters about my vision and my aspiration <laughs> for our Bahasa Melayu and its literature, its sastra. Uh, we have done a few of them, for example, in, uh, at school. I, I still remember we, we, we introduced uh, Speaker's Corner, Apato Sudot Pidato, which we wanted the, from the, the teachers to get their students to, to speak out, untuk cakap. They have Bahasa, apa ni, Minggu Bahasa Inggris, they have Bahasa Malaysia Week, they have, you know, those kind of things. And we want our students to be exposed to oratory skill and, and public speaking skills. Itu antaranya. Dan keduanya, we were trying to introduce our literatures, our sastra to all schools, regardless of the Nicholas schools, apa ni, sekolah agama ke, ataupun sekolah kerajaan. We want them to get familiarized with our sastra, with our no, apa ni, laureates, sastrawan negara. At the moment, if, if you ask any Malaysian, if they could give you uh, at least three names of our 14 uh, literature laureates, you are lucky enough to get, you know, out of 10, uh, uh, three of them could give you three names of our literature laureates ataupun sastra negara. Jadi, sekarang inilah yang kita nak bawakan, iaitu untuk, apa tu, you need to bring back that uh, pride of uh, our bahasa kebangsaan and also our literature. You know, you go to to Argentina, for example, they are proud of their Jorge's, Luis Borges. You're going to, uh, at least to <coughs> Brazil, they're, they're proud of uh, uh, Paulo Coelho. You go to uh, Czech Republic, they're proud of Kafka. You know, those names. But in Malaysia, who are we proud of as part of our uh, sastra and our apa ni literal laureate kita tak ada jadi itu yang saya cuba powerkan when I was in the ministry then <laughs> okay uh, 
I so, sorry, I, did I boring you? No, no, no. I, <laughs> I, I'm just keeping an eye on the comments here. Uh, uh, a lot of people actually agree with you. Uh, in fact, there was one comment from someone who said that, that he himself uh, is Chinese and he agrees that Bahasa, uh, by the way, I call it Bahasa Malaysia. At one point, it became Bahasa Melayu. But uh, a couple of people have been asking about the quota system. And, you know, I have my opinions on that as well. Uh, the, the quota system of getting into uh, higher education, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What you know, there seems to be a lot of uh, distrust, a lot of you know uh, anger, and um, not you know a lot of people are still questioning. And I don't, I don't know. In fact, yeah, I'll be honest. I don't know why it still exists. What is your take on this? It requires a, specif uh, a specific uh, forum to talk about that because yes. Some of I wouldn't say it's totally true and totally wrong. Kadang-kadang ada banyak perceptions, tapi banyak juga yang reality. Uh, and for your information, that all this quota system based on race and ethnicity was developed uh, decades ago, masa during the new uh, economic uh, model, uh, uh, new economic policy. In the 90s, with, it came along with certain policies. But now, we're in the 20th century. We need to revisit and look forward on how will it go. Kalau nak kata, if you want to say that, oh, there's, this, uh, there's a racial quota on, on uh, the entrance to higher learning education, actually, it's not totally right. You know why? To go to polytechnics, there's, there's no quota. Although, you know that TVET is the way forward of the country. To go to... Teachers College Institute uh, per, per Guruan, there's no quota. And, you know, to go to high universities, a lot of course, courses, there's no quota at all. Uh, tapi, other certain programs that come along with quota, uh, contohnya macam matriculacy. So, but matriculacy was meant to help the poor Malays, uh, especially those living in the rural to get themselves into the university. Why? Because, you know, their situation, you just compare schools in Baram, Sarawak, or schools in uh, Pulau Mabul, or schools in uh, Cameron, uh, Cameron Highland, punya orang asli kampung. They're not the same as schools in Bukit Damansara. Not the same as school like St. John or, 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 or uh, Asunta, uh, Asunta in PJ. If you don't help those people from rural places to get their place in higher education, I don't think that will be just and that will be fair to them. So that was the very idea of coming up with racial quota or whatever. But again, now things have changed and we need to relook into that system. And this is where, <laughs> in my book again, okay, uh, we were trying to, to introduce uh, a different method and a different approach to look at higher education. We were trying to, to use the big data system and deep analytics. I've mentioned that in that book. We have started, but you know, the change of government, sumo bruba. And we tried to introduce uh, the new education model based on the Laporan Jata Kuasa Kajian Dasar Pendidikan Kebangsaan. But unfortunately, the latest response from the Minister of Education, they're not going to implement that new education model. So, but in the, according to this new education model, we want to make sure there will be compulsory 12 years of education, just like any other developed countries. And our student will only go to the tertiary education through single entry examination. And since the early years of the uh, Sekolah Menengah Secondary School, based on their data, based on the deep analytics on them, they will be channeled <clears throat> to the stream or to the field of studies that will that, that, that is suitable with their psychometry, with their abilities, and with their interests. So with that, I think we could get away from all those discussions uh, that was resulted by certain policies that that been developed a couple of decades ago. That's number one. And number two, uh, yeah. Haris, when you're talking about uh, to 
entrance to tertiary education, just like I mentioned earlier, we need to make TVET as part of the main, mainstream, just like what happening in Germany. In Germany, you, you look at TVET, TVET is at par with academics. Uh, this is not what happening in Malaysia. Here, you're talking about TVET, you're talking about vocational, technical education. Orang nampak itu kelas kedua. They, 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 they will look at it as, you know, it's for the school drops, it's for the college drops, it's for, you know, they're not looking at them as another choice or the other choice. They nampak sebagai, okay, itu that the second or third or the last choice. So we want to change that. And we have started it. Itu yang geram sangat ni. We have started it and yeah. they did not continue with it. Okay. Um, yeah, the, I'm just watching the comments section. There's a couple of small little world wars breaking out there. Guys, thank you for commenting though. Thank you for being engaged in this. I think Dr. Masli, uh, you know, here's the point, Doc. Memang... Yeah, I agree with Razin. I can read the comment by Razin. Yeah. Uh, uh, the kata quota must be open to poor students regardless of race. Yeah, totally agree. That's why, Razin, if you read my book, again, sorry, I said promo, over-promoting my book. Thank uh, you, Razin. Uh, <laughs> okay, I keep mentioning about apa ni, apa ni, assisting and giving a special entrance for Sepada. B40, regardless of race. Number two, orang asli. Number three, OKU, disabled. Apa ni, uh, sorry, uh, peop, uh, children with special needs and, and also for athletes, regardless of their race. And these people, we need to help them. Yeah. I agree. Uh, everyone who's watching, please, if you've not done it, please share this uh, live streaming. I think there's a lot of valuable nuggets uh, we are listening to. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh, uh, we've been taking so much of your time. Before you go, Dr. Masli, um, before I have to say you this. go, before before you go, you know, the, the 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 comments are blowing up. I can see everybody's. Uh, they, you know, here's the good thing. Uh, what I not everybody has to agree with you, right? Doc, so, Dr. Masli, no. there are some people in the comment section who are not agreeing. You know what, everyone? This is what I always say. You don't have to agree with everyone. You can agree to disagree as long as you are open to discussion, as long as you're open to ideas and you don't shut down and you don't cut someone off and you don't say, you know, you don't uh, resort to being rude or, or you know, name throwing and all. We need to be able to disagree on, on certain levels. And uh, that's democracy. Just like Obama said, democracy is noisy democracy is very noisy indeed okay yeah. before we go dr masley i just want to um let's leave with a message of hope if possible um you sound you sound like an ideal, idealist and we have worked that out uh, optimistically speaking uh how what hope has malaysia are we is it hopeful that we are turning a corner that we are moving towards a brighter future? Uh, and if so, uh, what do you see that brighter future look like? And if not, what will it take to turn? Okay, hope is always there. Never lose hope. Keep striving and we strive together. Regardless of what happening, you know, never lose your dream. And please continue live with your dream because one day today's dream will become tomorrow's reality okay so what is your dream my dream is to see malaysia in the next less than 10 years maybe in 2030 as a reading nation as a nation that have the quality of finland when it become when it comes to schooling and teaching at par with singapore when it comes to mathematics and science we're standing at the same stage with Germany when it comes to TVET education, we are at the same level with Japan when it comes with values and discipline. That's my dream. And a very idealistic dream it is. <laughs> <laughs> some, some may say you're a dreamer, but you're not the only one. I'm Dr. not Masley. the only one. Yeah. You are not the only one. Okay. 
thank you again. Before before you say goodnight, is there is there anything we have not spoken about that you would like to bring up or quickly mention uh, before we call it a night for all the good people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A word to all Malaysians: never lose hope. Let's work together. Long march, Chengshen. The spirit of dragon and horse. Spirit. By the way, I was born in the year of the horse. Uh, oh, I, just just to let you know. You know, Haris, I was born in the year of tiger. And uh -huh. there's there's a proverb in, in, in amongst our Chinese friends. They say, but it's not good. It is a negative one. If you do things, if you do your work, never do it mama hoo hoo, like horse and tiger. Jin <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope this conversation has not been Jin Chai Bo Chai. It's not mama hoo hoo. <laughs> it's a long <laughs> marching <laughs> Long March and Chun. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please uh, go to the bookstores or order online a memory book and mem memoir from Dr. Masli Malik. Do you know what it retails at, Doc? The book? What's the retail? We can, I'm not so sure. It has the retail price? Dimension. Yeah. It's 59. Bring it. 59. Uh, and it is in Bahasa Malaysia as well. Uh, it is in Bahasa Malaysia, some, but. Yeah, in, in the next two months, the English version will be in the bookstores. Okay. So uh, please go out uh, if you can or get it online. Uh, I'm sure they, it will be on a digital platform uh, somewhere soon, somehow. Memory, a book and memoir from Dr. Masli Mali. Thank you so much, uh, Doc, for your time. Thank you so much for your energy. And thank you so much. I thank you, for Harris, for having me in your show. Thank you. Uh, good night, and uh, we'll definitely catch up with you soon. Terima kasih, Doc Masli. Yeah, terima kasih, Aris. Good, good night, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Good. All right. That was uh, Dr. Masli Male. Um, very refreshing, I thought. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation with him, and I always enjoy conversation with him. Guys, I've been watching the comments uh, a lot of positivity out there. A lot of people who are saying waste of time. That's fine. Uh, you have a choice in life. You don't have to watch this and listen to us speak. But to those of you who did, who are still watching, thank you so much. And please, if you have not shared, why have you not shared? All right? Please share this uh, Facebook and this uh, YouTube and uh, this podcast if you're listening to podcasts. Guys, that's been another episode of What's Going On in Malaysia. Like I said at the beginning of the show, I do this show because I'm just trying to get this very question answered. What is going on, Malaysia? And tonight we have looked at education uh, and we have looked at it from the point of view of someone who is in the top seat, former Minister of Education, Dr. Masli Malik. And I believe that uh, the points of view that he's been given, although they seem idealistic and they seem a bit fantastical, what I am truly pleased about is the passion, the authentic, authenticity, and the, the truth behind it all. I believe this man believes what he says, which cannot be said for most people or even most politicians. So thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed the show, leave a review, leave a comment. Don't forget to get this very book. Yes, I got it for free. I know that's one of the perks. Um, but uh, you know what? I'm going to go out buy a few copies and give to my friends as well. So terima kasih, tuan tuan dan puan puan. Thank you for watching the show. We've got some more great episodes of What's Going On Malaysia coming up real soon. Thank you for subscribing if you're watching YouTube. And thank you for sharing if you've been watching on Facebook. I've thoroughly enjoyed all the comments. Thank you very much, Chandran. A great show, Mr. Harith. Thank you, Johnny Sibangun. Thanks, Harith. Thank you, Dr. DJ Ling. Kita ana Malaysia. Kita ana Malaysia. Thank you, Farah Sharihene. Say thank you, Dr. Mazi. Guys. We could say thank you all night, but from honesty and from all my heart, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for spending this hour with us. And please keep an eye out for the next episode of What's Going On Malaysia. And thank you for supporting the cause, which in my humble opinion is we're all in it to create a better Malaysia. All right. So good night. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. And I'll see you guys 